Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Arteezy's Troll Warlord and talking about the item build that he goes, the plays that he makes, and just in general, what makes Troll Warlord a good pick this game. And yeah, let's get into it. So this was game three between TSM and EG. It was definitely a real nail biter of a game, 36 minutes. Very close score, only 25 to 27, and Arteezy had a pretty nice game, ending 10 and 3 with what I would consider is probably my favorite Troll Warlord build. I think BKB is obviously a requirement on this hero, that's pretty standard, but what he did that I thought was really cool was he went Maelstrom as his farming item into the BKB. After that, he went for Basher. After Basher, instead of completing the Abyssal, he went back for the Mjolnir. And I like this because I think the 70 attack speed for Mjolnir, which is a big jump in attack speed, is really nice because it builds up the fervor. A lot of people think, oh, I don't need, I don't need attack speed on Troll because I have my passive. It's like, it literally, it doesn't just instantly give you 800 attack speed. It's not focus fire. You have to build up stacks. So I don't get why people don't buy attack speed on Troll. You can even see he started this game with a Wraith Ban. I'm a big fan of this build, and I definitely think um, it's something you guys should consider. But he went back for the Abyssal to end the game. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think this is generally the most optimal Troll build for the majority of games. And I like to see that he was going in. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game League website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, so in the early game, I, I wanted to kind of skip over the lane a little bit. Basically, the gist of Troll, you can find in a lot of other videos that I've made. The main thing you should consider is you want to spam your ranged axis off cooldown. The first item you should almost always buy, in fact, he started with it this game, is a magic stick. Reason why is you want to be trading a lot as Troll, forcing out spells from the enemy. And naturally, when you do that, you want to get stick charges from it so you can keep spamming spells. From there, he went for a cheeky little Wraith ban here. Troll Warlord is definitely one of the worst carries when it comes to base armor. Yes, he does gain armor when he is swapped to his melee form, but it's nothing too crazy. It is four, which is not bad, and that's why when you're getting gone on a troll, you have to be in melee form. It is very important for the stout shield block inherently that you will get when in melee form, and of course, this bonus for armor, but the Wraith ban is good nonetheless. From there, you're gonna see he doesn't go for boots, and I like his build a lot because basically when if you've ever played carry and you've waited on the boots, if you've held out on the boots and you've instead built Band of Elven skin in the Gloves of Haste, you'll know how much of a damage increase this actually is. It is pretty wild how much bonus damage you actually get from going these two items over the boots. And so, yeah, I like it on troll once again, really doubling down on building up that early fervor and playing around that. So to be perfectly honest, Troll Warlord also has another major downside. The biggest downside of Troll, I would say, as an early laning carry is that he's very easy to kick out of the lane with specific heroes, and he's particularly easy to gank. He doesn't have any disengage spell. There's no blink, there's no Monkey King tree dance, even though Monkey King can also be kicked out of the lane. There's no way to get out, right? You don't have Jug Spin, you don't have Illusions, so what do you do with this hero? Well, you kind of just gotta give up the tower. And this is a big thing. This is the first major play I wanna cover. We're six minutes and 45 seconds in here and most carry players would not make this play. You know what they would do? They would fight to the death. They would scream at their Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit, Abed, save me. I need your help. You know what happens then? Your Ember Spirit TPs into a lane that is not good because you're, you're, you're a troll warlord who's not that strong. Some games, of course, there's exceptions, and I'll get into that in a moment. But in a lot of games, for instance, this game, he's against the Dawnbreaker. This is the hero that dominates the early game. He's also against the Chen, another hero that dominates the early game. So he doesn't want to force into these heroes. What does he do? He gives up the tower. He understands, okay, it is what it is. This is the case in this game. I have to jungle. After that, the wave is going to push in, and he's able to clean up the wave under his tier two tower, which is quite nice for him anyway, right? So he's able to end up getting the farm nonetheless. If he had tried to get Tessa under the tower, he would have forced bad rotations from his teammates and likely not gotten the creep wave and probably have died. However, let me quickly talk about the exception as we watch him farm another tier two here. The exception is sometimes you're gonna be playing against something like Beastmaster and maybe you have an Undying as your position five instead of something like a Shadow Shaman. 
right? You're gonna have a lot more kill threat in certain lanes, and you're gonna get a lot of kills in certain lanes. And in those lanes, you can stay in the lane for much longer. In fact, you should stay in the lane for nearly as long as you can, as Troll Warlord isn't that great of a jungler. He's not terrible, but he's not great. And so yeah, you want to stay in the lane as long as you can. As we'll see here, as he's farming, a fight is breaking out mid, he's not going to consider going. He's looking to see if they're going to dive the tier 1. That would be a situation in which he maybe could TP, but instead he's actually going to pull the small camp. This is really advanced from RTC because what this does is it gives him a situation where maybe he can farm the creep wave here, maybe. Still a little bit dangerous depending on where the enemy is rotating and where they're giving um, information or where they're showing, where TSM is showing, but he goes for the small camp pull, which helps him farm a small camp, not the you know, he could have farmed it alone, but also just allows him to farm this creep wave in a much safer position away from the enemy offlane tier 1 tower. Following that up is probably one of the most advanced plays we'll see in this entire game. And that's going to be pretty crazy because what he does is he runs back to late. Oh my god. Unbelievable. But really, I, I actually mean this, guys. If you're trying to get to the next level of Dota, what most people will never learn is the importance of TPs. If you commit your TP early, you can't push in the lane far, right? If he wants to push in this lane and has no TP, he can't, because they can gank him too easily. If he wants to help with a mid fight, he can't. If the enemy sees him TP top, they should smoke there, because he can't go bottom. So what you're seeing is, there's a lot of things that happen when you use your TP. There's a lot of things you can't do when you TP. There's a lot of things you can do when you save your TP. So even if it's going to cause you to miss one or two or even three CS, you should give it up. But same farming rotations here, pretty simple. You don't really want to go to your tri camp. You want to stay, especially if you're playing on Dire in this convenient wood setup. Um, you want to stay in this portion of the map as long as humanly possible. So as I was saying, if you're in danger, please just back off. Let them shove in the wave and farm it when it pushes in. Then when they leave your area, push in the wave and go from there. Now, because I think this is, uh, you know, this is pretty important. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I think generally Troll Warlord kind of is trash. I think this hero is generally actually quite bad. Um, in this game in particular, I think the reason why it kind of works is it's good against CK, generally. It's it's pretty good against CK. It's a hero that can kill Monkey King if Monkey King's the carry. Uh, it's honestly a decent laner against Dawnbreaker. It's one of the carries that cannot feed the Dawnbreaker. And so I understand why they picked it. It's also a nice pairing with Marcy. I even considered making a video on this Marcy because Marcy max sidekick this game. So you can give your troll alert 50% bonus lifesteal and 60 damage, 65 damage, right? And troll obviously really likes flat damage because of fervor. He also has treads, wraith ban, etc, etc. So right, the Marcy works really well with the troll. So I think there's a lot of synergy with this troll pick here. And I think it addresses TSM's draft relatively well. However, you will see the downside of troll alert in this clip here. While he is really good at roaching, especially if he has a Marcy on his team, he's incredibly good at roaching. Uh, he, he kind of just dies. Like, early game, this hero's horrible. Like, there's no other way to put it. Until, until Troll is BKB, it's one of the worst carries in Dota. Even if it's, like, 2k gold up, it still generally can't fight. Like, it just can't. It gets kited too easily. Like, he's gonna ult here. It just doesn't do that much damage. He gets stunned like once. I mean, to be fair, he actually nearly kills Tomato. You gotta give him some credit, but... It's just rough, right? It's rough. And that is definitely the dilemma of Troll. And so the reason why I want to show you that clip is because I could just give you a compilation of every single clip where Arteezy takes a dump on TSM. But the reality is, if you don't see things like this, guys, hey, you're going to go play Troll. You're going to listen to what I'm saying now. You're going to play Troll, okay? Because you're going to be inspired from this video. You're going to load into the game. You're going to win your lane because you're spamming your axes. And Troll's a pretty good laner. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have this, you know, 12 minute Maelstrom. And you're going to run in, fight them, click your ulti, get stunned once, and then die. And you're like, oh yeah, Speed told me that the hero feeds. So generally, if you can stall out the game and farm until the BKB, that's your best bet. The only other option is cleaning up fights. Troll does a good amount of damage. His ulti does a good amount of damage. If the enemy has already casted most of their disables. If they've casted most of their disables, you can look to make a play. You know, what's really funny about me saying this, like... <laughs> Comically enough, he has an incredibly good fight here, one that really plays out, but I do want you to see the... This is actually so great. This is actually so great. I'm so glad I can show you this to you guys, because the difference between this fight and, and the Roche fight was the Roche fight, he's he's getting initiated on, right? He's the person getting gone on. Who's getting gone on here? Shaman? Ember? Not him, right? So the majority of spells have been casted, right? Most of the spells have been casted. Even CK stun at the end there. I think it's probably a mistake from Tomato. 
He probably should have saved it for the troll. Maybe this would have been a good fight, so maybe a misplay. But, you know, that's what Dota is. There's misplays left and right, technically. And so he gets his ulti off, right? And what's there to stun him? The Boundless Strike doesn't hit him either. And even though he doesn't have BKB, he actually chews through a really tanky Dawnbreaker and a CK. Heroes that are generally quite unkillable actually end up falling to the Troll Warlord. Even a Monkey King who's level 12, very farmed in his ultimate, ends up going down um, at some point. Not to him, but at some point. And it sets up for a puck kill as well. So as you can see, Troll has this edge case where he can actually pop off. But you have to be good enough to identify these these right these situations otherwise you're gonna look like your average pub player who just barrels in because he's having a decent game and dies all right next up let's talk about ulti usage and obviously when do you look for fights because like i'm kind of generally telling you to farm right it's it's usually best to wait till the bkb but of course he's got his bkb now and you'll even see he ignores uh quite a bit of farm right quite a bit of farm to take this team fight and this is kind of what being a good carry is a lot of carry players fall into this issue where they kind of just either fight or farm, they can't really do both. And you want to be able to do both. And it's tough because basically, as you'll see here, he's going to show up late, but that's kind of what you want as troll anyway. And so that's what you should be looking for. You can see he's constantly looking to disengage. He's like, oh, maybe the fight's not going to happen. Maybe it is going to happen. Maybe it isn't going to happen. And a lot of people would watch this and be like, Arteezy sucks. Why is he not making up his mind? It, it's not the point, right? It depends on the circumstances. He's turning around. He's coming back to fight based on TSM's movements, right? And we're going to see that play out here because they cast everything once again on his teammates. He's now able to force a BKB from the Monkey King, get on top of the Dawnbreaker, who gets rooted by a bed. Really nice root. Kill him off. Ends up kiting out here. Really nice decision not to chase. A lot of people would chase here. They'd be like, oh, I have BKB. And they'd dive the back line. Instead, he stays on the puck, tries to burst him down off a bash. I would say a respectable attempt, but you can't get two bashes in a row, so... That's unlikely, but is able to get a nice ranged bash onto the Monkey King and take him out. And the only reason why he doesn't BKB there is the CK actually had to get out. And on top of that, Puck and Shen both don't really have ways of preventing him from hitting the Monkey there. So yeah, he didn't have to waste his BKB. Usually I would just recommend though, if you can burst a key target by clicking BKB ulti, click BKB ulti. That's like the best way to look at the majority of team fights as troll. And we'll see that as this you know video plays out. All right, in this upcoming team fight here, we're going to see a really nice example of when to actually drop that BKB and drop the ulti. Because a lot of the time people think, oh, you use the ulti when you're low on HP. It's kind of like a, a shallow grave type ability. But the problem is, if you don't click ulti early on into the fight, if you don't know what it does, basically it makes you unkillable. The only thing that can kill you through it, I believe, is Axe Dunk. But um, yeah, it gives you a ton of lifesteal, but most importantly, it gives you 200 attack speed. So basically, if you can stay on top of the person, the problem is when you battle trance, you can't attack move. And a big part of doing damage in the mid to late game is attack moving. A lot of people don't even know that. It's like if you don't have a stun and you're playing a carry, you have to attack move. Like people, I'm like watching people play Deuce in a team fight and someone's running away from them and they're just auto attacking. It, 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 I'm like, what? Like, like they have a Scotty and they could have killed the TA, but they're standing still. It's like, you have to attack move, but you can't attack move when you're battle trancing and you can't disengage as well. And as a result, there's this big issue with troll where you can get kited. So you kind of need to wait. You got to wait for other disables, which is why his team comp's good. He has a lot of disables on his team, so it's likely he's going to be able to find someone. So I have no idea what Moon Meander was doing here. I... It is what it is. Happens. We all make mistakes. We're all Dota players. We're humans. You know, it is what it happens. But he finds a good jump onto the Monkey King. Not overextending. Staying back. Making sure he just gets the clean kill. Really clean root here. And now we'll see a beautiful jump. And this is the perfect time to BKB ulti. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, the Stormbreaker is very tanky. However, against Troll Warlord, it's not really enough. And we'll see that play out. Also, the Marcy stun is a relatively long duration stun at max, 2.6 seconds. So it's likely that he'll get a bash somewhere halfway into that or towards the end, and he'll be able to follow up on that. So he goes for the ulti, gets a relatively well-timed bash, and then it gets followed up by the hex. But honestly, arguably, even if there wasn't a hex here, he probably still would have killed the Dawnbreaker and yeah, killed him from full. And that's a beautiful jump. Not only does he kill off the Dawn, he gets her before the BKB comes out and or any abilities. Best case scenario jump from crit on the Marcy and then the follow up from Marquise. At this point, he's got a good 1v1 matchup with Tomato. As you can see, if the illusions aren't in play, as long as you get the mischance out, CK is never a hero that wants to buy MKB. 
Yes, he'll buy Bloodthorn at some point in the game to deal with the mischance, and that's the most common response because it also helps the illusions. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if he doesn't have it, well, he loses the mad fight every time. And yeah, that's how that plays out. And off of this, now he's able to get his Abyss Hole. And a big thing I want to quickly talk about is understanding like Basher as an item. Because if you don't have attack speed and your hero can't burst people, don't buy Basher. The reason why Basher is good on Troll and good on PA is when PA jumps in, she gets given attack speed and has a crit so she can burst people in the stun of Bash. But if you can't easily kill someone in the 1.5 seconds, right, it's not that good of an item, which is why I honestly think people wildly overpurchase Basher on something like a Wraith King. It's like they'll have like no attack speed item and buy a basher and i just don't get it it's like even if you bash the person they're not gonna die so you generally don't need to bash them you might be like oh but i have to kill the puck because my team never stuns him it's like you're not gonna kill him even in a bash it's 1.5 seconds you're not gonna kill him with a bash don't buy basher but it's good on troll especially i like what he does here where he doesn't he, go, he went for Basher back into the Mjolnir, and I like that because it's the attack speed to enable the Bash. You might be like, oh, why do you need Mjolnir? You have your ulti. You don't always have your ulti. In fact, you don't really want to necessarily insta ulti all the time, but obviously here, man, this Dawnbreaker is getting melted by the troll. Just absolutely melted. Even went for the ulti without the BKB there, which is generally a mistake. Just keep that in mind. But at this point, even without the ulti, he's got the Mjolnir. He's got the Abyssal. He will be able to stick on top of targets, and that's why I like this build. Um, Troll has a big issue with getting kited, and I think this is probably the best way to go about not getting kited. A little bit of attack speed with an Abyssal Blade, and eventually you can even go into a Blink Dagger. It looks like he was going for the Scotty here. I think he probably just wanted to tank up a little bit. It's also consistent damage. Anti-heal is pretty actually good against Chen and Dawnbreaker heals as well, as well as even Monkey King and CK Lifesteal. So it's a nice game to have the Scotty in, in, in that way as well. But yeah, that's going to be about the end of today's video, considering they go high ground here. They catch Shimano, the Puck buys back. I think he gets hexed by a uh, by uh, the uh, shadow shaman in a moment here and uh yeah the game ends up ending off the puck dieback that i think happens right here yeah nice abyssal into the hex into the shackles and that's gonna be all thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you learned quite a bit about the carry roll about items map movements and so on i was really happy with a lot of the things that i was able to talk about in today's video and hopefully you feel the same but all right thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next one and i'm up peace and that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.